Do you tell patients to subscribe to your channel? Imagine I walk into a room. Hi, I'm Dr. Varshavsky. You were just involved in a code blue. Please subscribe, please sub. What's up folks, Dr. Mike here. I'm back at it with another responding to comments video. I will say, it's been a while since I've done one of these, but you are slacking. I want more questions in the comments section. Get to it, start writing, even if it's in the middle of this video. Don't stop until you get your question answered because I want to answer all of them. Let's get started. In reality, the only times my channel comes up with my patients is if they already know me or in the instance that we've run out of time and a patient wants to know about a specific subject and I know I have a video on that subject, I'll then recommend that they check out one of my videos. But I don't push it on anybody. That's not for office time. That's strictly for us. Me and you, you and me, you know, YouTube. Karen Cobster, dumb question. There is no such thing as a dumb question. In a heated situation where one has to perform CPR, how does a person ensure that no ribs get broken, particularly the ones nearest to the lungs? Well, almost all the ribs are near the lungs. It's not something you should think about. That's the bottom line. What you should think about is making sure that help is called, that you've nominated someone to call help or called help yourself. And right away, if the person's not breathing, no pulse, to start pounding on that chest, doing it at 100 beats per minute, singing Staying Alive, if you will, and pushing at least two inches deep. So you gotta push pretty firmly in order to make that happen. If you crack a rib, no worries. You're extending the person's life in order to get them help. They're already gone. By doing the chest compressions, you're actually increasing their chance for recovery. That's the best thing you can do when someone's heart stops. Who tends to bear when you work a long shift? Robin Cherry Siegler. The great thing is, is that one of my close friends is my neighbor, so he gets to hang out with Bear. Then my nephews oftentimes take turns coming to see Bear. Sometimes I have someone clean my apartment while I'm not home. So there's always someone taking taking care of Bear or hanging out with Bear when he's alone for a long period of time. And I don't work the 14 hour shift that you guys saw on my vlog the other day all the time. That's like a once a week thing uh, where I have a really long shift that I wanted to take you with me on. But in reality, most of my shifts are shorter than that and Bear's not alone for more than, you know, six, eight hours, which he's totally fine doing. And he sleeps in the bathroom even if I'm home at that time anyway. Bear! Do you hear his little feats? Hey! Hey! Hey, little puppers! You wanna say hi to the camera? They want they want you to say hi. <laughs> God, you're such an aggressive kisser. Bear, ask for consent. Connor Perry, can hats give you headaches? Great, great question. There's actually a type of headache that's lesser known. It's called a compression headache from wearing helmets, headbands, hats, all of those things that can put unnecessary pressure on your scalp can actually cause you a headache. Not to worry though, generally when you take those things off in a few hours, maybe if you need to take something over the counter medication, it'll go away. But the reason this happens is because there's always movement between the sutures uh, of your scalp and there's always a little bit of movement. There's blood flow that needs to happen. There's a little bit of expansion there. And when you don't let that happen, you could actually get a headache known as a compression headache. So Connor, great question. Is it true that stress can lead to the growing of white hairs? First of all, Ariel, I gotta tell you, I got them white hairs. <laughs> What's happening is actually you have a decrease in uh, melanin producing cells called melanocytes in the hair follicle. If your hair is white, that means you completely have lost all your melanin. But if you have some, you get gray hair. So it's almost like partial pigmentation, if you will. Now, the question you asked is if stress affects it. We know genetics is the most important thing, but stress seems to play a role in this. I've looked into this myself. We don't have a cause and effect relationship. Let me tell you that outright. But when we look into it, we do see some sort of pattern and correlation emerge between those who don't sleep enough, who have very competitive jobs, high stress levels at work, family members, they generally gray earlier. Our reasoning for this, which is unproven, but what we think happens is that there is an inflammatory response from free radicals that occurs from stress. And that actually interferes with the melanin process, like the way that the color is brought to the follicle. And when that happens, you're more likely to gray earlier. While science hasn't given us a definitive answer, I'm gonna give it a preliminary true. That stress does cause your hair to turn gray sooner. Is cracking my knuckles a bad idea? Will I get arthritis? Well, Henry, I can't promise if you're gonna get arthritis or not. But what I can tell you is that medical research has looked into the science of cracking knuckles. 
And that sound that you hear is actually just nitrogen bubbles popping in your synovial fluid. Synovial fluid is the stuff that lubricates your joints. And when you hear that cracking, you think that's a bad thing, that your bones breaking or anything like that. That's not really the case. It's these completely harmless nitrogen bubbles. And there's been really decent evidence that shows it does not lead to arthritis. And unless it's causing you some kind of pain or discomfort, it's usually and generally pretty harmless. If it makes you feel better, psychologically speaking, crack away. And as long as you're not bothering anybody, that's fine. Now, if you're getting pain when you're cracking, maybe you already have arthritis. Maybe you have a tendon injury. Definitely don't crack in those scenarios. If you find yourself needing to crack, otherwise you do have pain, that could also be a sign that something's going on and you should talk to your doctor. But in general, know that when you crack your knuckles once, see like, now I can't crack them again. The reason why is because you need to give time for those nitrogen bubbles to reform in the synovial fluid. It's kind of a fun fact for you. Catherine Allard, how many patients do you have? Just wondering. Oh, that's a good question. I see around 30, 40 patients a week in my outpatient office as a family medicine doctor doing primary care stuff and urgent care. And then I have probably a panel of, what, like 500, 600 patients that I've built up from residency who I'm their primary care doctor, that when they schedule an appointment for a follow-up, whatever it is, they schedule it with me. This panel of patients that I built up, I, I have a very close relationship with them. Not all of them come in all the time, and sometimes they can get care from one of my colleagues, but they're important to me because we've established a rapport, I know their history. That's the beauty of having a family medicine doctor, so that we don't give you unnecessary care, and we can guide you to the best specialist, uh, the best imaging places, the best physical therapist, all of that. Navigating the health system can be a really troublesome feat. And if you have a good guide and a family medicine doctor, it's gonna save you a lot of time, money, trouble, and you're gonna get better outcomes. Marcos Morales, aren't canker sores and cold sores the same thing? They may look similar, but they're actually not the same thing at all because of their cause. Cold sores are caused by a virus and canker sores are sometimes can be caused by a virus, but usually they're caused by some sort of stress. Whether that means it's a stress to your immune system, it could be a stress, like a physical stress, like if you have braces and they're rubbing along a specific part of your mouth, the inside of your cheek, you can get a canker sore. Also, uh, hot liquids, spicy foods can sometimes cause canker sores. It's really a physical stress. Cold sores come from a virus. And unless you have been infected by that virus, you're never gonna get a cold sore. Canker sores, you can get virus or no virus. Kelly Vo, hey doc, what's your intake on dragon's breath, AKA liquid nitrogen, is it safe to consume? What? Dragon's breath? I, it doesn't sound safe, so I wouldn't do it. The only thing that should be going into your lungs is air. And ideally you like it for, to be clearer air, like what we're breathing in New York City is not ideal. <laughs> so no, I think liquid nitrogen doesn't sound safe to consume. I need more information before I give you an official doctor's recommendation. Lydia Dimock. I often lucid dream and walk and talk in my sleep. I feel like some nights it could be causing me to be deprived of sleep. What should I do? Ooh, that's a good one. Sleepwalking is actually a problem. And sometimes people realize it, luckily because one of their partners realizes it, their family members realizes it. The real solution here is to get a proper workup from a doctor, hopefully one that specializes in sleepwalking, so that we can figure out the cause, perhaps give you a treatment for the cause, whether that means lifestyle changes or even medications, and monitor your sleep to see if it continues happening. But know that there are treatments out there. Trudy Kulkarani, what can we do to reduce muscle soreness after exercises? Oh man, this is something I struggle with. DOMS, delayed onset muscle soreness. Man, I get this so bad on the second day after a like, heavy workout or a new workout. Things that I do that I think work quite well. A, warm up and cool down are crucial. And it doesn't mean stretching, it means like dynamic warm ups. Those are ideal. The second thing is I love massage. Even though massage may not improve circulation as much as we'd like in muscles. It still feels good, it's relaxing, it lowers your cortisol levels, which allows you to recover better. And then the final thing is, on the day after a workout and you feel sore, and even the second day after, do a little active recovery. Do some of the motions that are sore, but don't do them with heavy weights. So lower by like, 80% intensity of the action, and you'll see that your blood flow will start to improve and you'll get better recovery. That's something I really enjoy doing. Entity 303 does stuff. 
What is the best way to remove sodas and energy drinks from your diet? The best way. Cold turkey. Walk to your fridge, take them out, spill them out, recycle the bottles, and then say you quit. If it's not in your home and you don't buy it, you're not gonna drink it. That's the bottom line. Maddie Baker. I wanted to go and follow you on Twitter, but your account is suspended. What did you do? I didn't do anything. I think my Twitter account is fine. I'm gonna look it up right now. No, my Twitter account is fine. Maybe you wrote this a long time ago. First of all, you need to follow me on Twitter. It's real doctor spelled out Mike. I post some good articles. I give my opinions on things. You really should be following me there. So go on Twitter and follow me, just saying. Here's an awesome playlist I put together for you that starts off with my hospital vlog. Literally a full day in the hospital where I teach everybody about how to stay happy and healthy. I'll see you on this playlist. Let's do it.